Welcome back, this is your friend, the Connoisseur, and today on the comics that changed comics, we look at Saga of the Swamp Thing by Alan Moore, Stephen Bissett, and John Totalbin. I don't know if I pronounced the last two names right, but I do know the writer, Alan Moore. And in the Saga of the Swamp Thing, he actually starts it where else but Seattle. This is told from the point of view of the Floronic Man, who is Jason Woodrow, who is a teacher to both the Swamp Thing, Alec Holland, and Pamela Isley, other known as Poison Ivy. He's actually influential in Poison Ivy's origin, but here he is hired by a corporation out of prison to do tests on the Swamp Thing to figure out exactly what he was. But here's the thing. Swamp Thing is actually a creation of the green, feeding off the memories of the body of Alec Holland. So he was never human. Swamp Thing has this vision that his humanity has been taken from him. But the best part they left him was the humanity. They took everything else. So the Pharaonic Man gains massive power and goes on a rampage. And Swamp Thing just lays him out. I mean, seriously, he takes away the, his connection to the green. And the Pharaonic Man kind of goes crazy and Swamp Thing just goes off into the night. But there's really trippy artwork in this series. It really is trippy artwork. Um, this is really good art. This is the reason I buy comics, especially old comics. It's because not only is there writing like the Saga of Swamp Thing, but it's the art. It's just, it's really good. It's a comic book. It's trippy. Did I mention this is a horror book? Swamp Thing is a horror book. And it got so adult, eventually that DC Comics had to rebrand it Vertigo, hence we got the Vertigo line, which this book is not the book that changed just comics, but this is the book that changed DC Comics and created the Vertigo imprint. I mean, this is some really good artwork. Um, so we got titles like V for Vendetta, and Transmetropolitan, just a bunch of really good books from the Vertigo line. Just really crazy monsters. It's probably good that you can't see this in focus. It's just really crazy artwork. And of course, John Constantine. Talking. Talking to Swamp Thing. And Swamp Thing is exploring his powers of the green, as you can see here. He's actually going across the world doing things. This is one of my favorite images from the comic. Is him and Abigail. Uh, they're just embracing and kissing in the moonlight. That's one of my favorite images from the series. There's a lot of good imagery. Uh, so you can see underwater vampires living in a lake. And I want to talk about power. Swamp Thing realizes he goes from a monster and once he realizes he's a creation of the green I mean he starts reaching levels of godhood these are lake vampires by the way he sent throughout just to do deal with the lake vampires as you can see and yeah as I was saying he gets connected to the green and this is what he does to the lake, killing all the vampires, exposing them to sunlight. At the bottom of the lake, there was no sunlight, and vampires don't need to breathe. So, tossing them all out from the mountain, just like with the, the roots, you know? He's one of the most powerful characters in DC Comics. I mean, look at this composition and this artwork. It I would call Swamp Thing... Uh, an ecological acid trip. Just the artwork um, reminds me of that, like I'm on an ecological acid trip. 
and yeah the if you want to talk about good comic art I would totally totally recommend Swamp Thing if you want trippy really good art Swamp Thing's where it's at uh, a lot of comic books a lot of comic books uh, just don't have good artwork you know and that's the thing this is a really cool shot of Swamp Thing uh, it's beautiful Swamp Thing realizing his power in a way. How does Swamp Thing end? Uh, with him wrestling an alligator. That's how Swamp Thing ends. No, I'm just kidding. You want to see how Swamp Thing ends? Go by the comics. They're really good. Swamp Thing discovers how powerful he is. That he's not just a Swamp Thing, but chosen by the green. I mean, there's such things as... Light and Dark, The Council of Trees, John Constantine, Werewolves, Haunted Houses, Going to Hell and Back for the One You Love. I mean, yeah, this is just a really good book. So if you want good comics, and you're old enough for this kind of comic, I'd suggest Swamp Thing. I know what you're thinking. The saga of Swamp Thing sounds great. But what order do I buy them in? Well, that's the secret. First it starts with the Saga of Swamp Thing. And then it goes to Love and Death. Volume 3 is The Curse. That's where he really begins discovering his power. Um, Swamp Thing, A Murder of Crows. Really good cover. Swamp Thing, Earth to Earth. Where he travels the universe. And then Swamp Thing. Reunion. So, check out Swamp Thing. It is one of the best comics I have had the pleasure of reading. And I would say that it is possibly even Alan Moore's greatest work.